Hi there, I'm Mark Whiteley. I'm a venous surgeon specialising in varicose veins, endovenous surgery, pelvic congestion and basically everything to do with veins. I started my uh, interest in veins really about 1998 when I became a consultant and then in 1999 I introduced the new endovenous techniques into the UK and that was a really big turning point for vein surgery but my passion for it started as a medical student when I found that whenever I asked people how veins worked they didn't really know even the people teaching us they sort of said it was something to do with the vowels but it was clear they didn't have a deep understanding and as a trainee I found that even when I was a professional vascular surgeon or a specialist in vascular surgery which means artery surgery although we did a lot of work on bypasses and carotids and aneurysms we weren't actually making as much difference to as many patients who are going to live long enough to make it a really worthwhile profession. Whereas with veins, you treat people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and if you do it properly, you give them fantastic quality of life for a very long time. Whereas if you don't treat it properly, or you do the sort of more traditional techniques and they keep coming back again, then the patients don't get that advantage. And nowadays with the new research, we can really find out which ways work and gives the best results for the longest and that's become such an important part of my life to try and get that out to my patients and also to other doctors. I wanted to create this video to help patients understand what the post-operative recovery is normally like. A lot of doctors are very happy to show their before and afters and of course those afters show the wonderful result when all the healing is taking place. And some of our patients have come to us and said, well, it wasn't as uncomfortable as I thought, but on the other hand, there was discomfort. And we know from our research that it's not anywhere near as painful as the old techniques like stripping, but any treatment that actually works is going to have some discomfort. We actually have to kill the veins and therefore there will be some inflammation in the healing process and that can be normal. So the whole idea of this whole video is to try and help you be able to look at any stage in your recovery, to look at the right time period after your treatment, whether you had it at the Whiteley Clinic, whether you had it somewhere else, and say, is this a normal recovery for this time, or is this something I should be concerned about and should contact somebody at the clinic? One of our patients recently, called Jenny, she actually posted her post-operative recovery on Instagram and followed all the way through from the first bit where there's quite a lot of bruising and discomfort all the way through to the excellent results she got at the end. So everybody who's got varicose veins thinks they've got fairly standard veins, but in fact there's a great difference between different people. And so everybody has slightly different treatments. But generally, most people with varicose veins will now have endovenous surgery, which might be radiofrequency laser, microwave, or one of the other newer techniques. And this part of the video is to go through that and also phlebectomy to show you what the post-operative recovery for the first three days is like. So on the day of your surgery, you'll come in, and virtually every clinic nowadays will do this under local anaesthetic, and it'll be walk-in, walk-out. You should only be in for two or three hours for a procedure. You'll have the veins treated under ultrasound control with heat and local anaesthetic around, sometimes one of the new non-heat techniques. And more often than not, you'll have veins pulled out on the surface. Some people use other techniques, but usually phlebectomies if your veins are big. That's the bit that bruises. Now, when you've finished the procedure, you've got lots of little holes, none of them big enough for a stitch, all of them just big enough for a little paper plaster or a stereostrip, and that's what's used to close the wounds at the end of the procedure. What we then do is put a bandage around the leg, so any local anaesthetic or any oozing is not going to ruin your clothes or your bed sheets that night, and then a stocking over the top. You go home and you should be able to walk normally. You should be back to a completely normal life. And in fact, we encourage walking. There's no reason you shouldn't be doing the washing up either, I'm afraid, or anything else around the house. You really have to get back to normal life. And it's very important because the only time we see complications like DVT now are people who put themselves to bed. So it's really, really important you keep yourself mobile. Well, the second day you wake up in the morning, you take the stocking off, you take the bandage off, you put the stocking back on, keep everything nice and clean, and back to normal life again, normal walking, normal work around the place. You can even drive on the second day, that's not a problem. So it's back to almost normal life. At the end of the third day, so you're now three days post-optively, everything comes off. You take off the stocking, you take off the little stereo strips. By now it will look quite bruised. If you've had any of the areas of phlebectomy, you'll see surface bruising. It is only surface bruising, but it usually looks really quite livid and purple. That's nothing to worry about. Any of the little wounds that ooze, just put another little plaster on, just as you would if you'd had a graze on your knee. That's all completely normal. You don't need to wear the stocking anymore, but 
if it's comfortable, you can wear it for non-medical reasons just because it's more comfortable. Although a healing process is the same in everybody, it does vary a little bit depending on nutrition and age. The better your nutrition, the more normal your healing will be. And of course, if you have poor nutrition, then it does slow down. Also, younger people with thicker skin do tend to heal quicker. And if you are a bit older or you have thin skin, do remember that it may be a bit delayed and just be a bit more careful before you start having baths or showers. Make sure those wounds are really well healed before you put any water on them. So in the first week after your endovenous surgery, the first thing that happens is you settle down and you realize you're still alive. And so the first thing is you think, oh, that wasn't so bad. And then by about day three or four, you've taken the bandages off, you've taken the stocking off, and you've seen quite a lot of bruising. And that's when you start reevaluating it. And you realize actually you have had surgery. And sometimes you'll start to feel a little bit of an ache, sometimes in the thigh or in the calf, depending which vein's been treated. And you'll see quite a livid amount of bruising. And it's really quite impressive. Now in the old days of stripping that bruising was deep and it was real agony down by the muscle but nowadays there's no, none of that down by the muscle so it just looks bad, it's not actually that bad. Any little pinholes or phlebectomy holes at this stage will be really still looking like wounds and just starting to go a bit pink and you'll really be thinking at this stage was it worth doing because it's really not looking great at all and it's certainly not looking like the befores and afters that you see on the internet. There's usually very little complication or risk at this stage. The things that we would want to know about is if all of a sudden your leg was incredibly swollen, it swelled right up, or if you suddenly found you couldn't put your foot to the ground and it was very tender to walk on, because that would make us worry about a deep vein thrombosis. But if you've got little localized lumps at this point, that isn't a problem at all because that's just the bruising. Um, and it's really a bit early for infections at the moment, but once in a blue moon you can see an infection. And this would look like a bright red patch that's getting bigger and making you feel quite unwell. But usually at this stage, all you want to be doing is keeping things clean and dry. You can have a quick shower, you can dab it dry afterwards, and you can rest assured that no matter how bad it looks at the moment, it's probably going to be an awful lot better by next week and subsequent weeks afterwards. Also in the first week, some people ask us about whether it's safe to have a bath or not. Well, there's no real set answer for that because it depends on every individual. One thing you don't want to do is get into a bath and soak so that your little wounds will open up because that leads to infection. You can probably have a quick bath if all the wounds look very well healed in that first week, although probably safer just to have showers for the first week unless everything's really healed. Certainly, if any of the wounds look even slightly open, do not have a bath. Now we're going to talk about week two, and week two is a much easier week really in some ways. At this stage, a lot of patients think they're getting worse because they now really feel that things should be like it is on the internet and things should look wonderful. And of course, healing takes longer than you think. The bruises now will be less purple, less livid, and probably starting to go a little more bluey brown. The wounds will now look more like little pink marks on the surface. You might notice some little things that look like stitches coming through the wounds, but they shouldn't be stitches because nowadays no one should use stitches for vein surgery. That's usually just little bits of tissue that when the vein was removed stay outside the skin and just get little keratin horns. They're like little protein horns and they can be quite tender. If you get those, just cut them off. It's not a problem at all. At this stage you can wear a stocking if you want to purely for comfort but really you should be forgetting that you've had vein surgery done. Don't worry if you've still got some tenderness especially when you touch it in the thigh or by the back of your leg that's still the big vein that's disappearing. You also might be worried by some lumps that you're getting down the leg that's just the dead vein disappearing and that's all the white cells your body's inflammatory tissue that's actually eating those veins away so that's all to the good. Complications you look at this time again if you've got a sudden swollen leg if things were really obviously swollen and you couldn't put your foot down that is a worry but a little bit of swelling is not abnormal at this stage because you have got inflammation in this leg. You should be able to walk without any problems at all. You should be having baths, you should be having uh, showers, and you should be driving and back to almost normal life. You certainly wouldn't want to be in the swimming pool at the moment showing off your leg or on a beach because it really is quite discolored, but you're well on your way to recovery. The big thing you want to watch for at this stage is if you did get a bright red area that was very, very hot and spreading, that would be a small wound infection and that would probably be heading from one of the little nicks that you've had. That would be the one reason you would get in contact with your clinic or your doctor to come back and see us.
So by the time you've reached your third week after your endovenous surgery and phlebectomy, things are now really starting to improve. The discomfort you had in the first two weeks is really starting to settle down. You should only feel any discomfort if you push quite hard in the areas. You will be surprised that you've still got quite a few lumps. And in fact, the lumps may be getting worse. That's because the other swelling and the inflammation is settling down. So you think that those lumps are actually worsening. But the reality of those lumps is the fact that the lumps are probably maybe a little bit bigger, but it's actually the fact that the swelling is actually reducing around them. And so the lumps feel a bit more prominent. They will be tender because that's normal inflammation. At this stage, you will be back to normal baths, showers, not driving, everything will be back to normal. And you may even be going back to the gym and going back to normal life completely. Your leg will look a little discolored still, the bruising will be settling but it'll be more of a browny colour that's settling down and the wounds will still be quite reddish but starting to heal more and you should be happy with your leg. If at this stage the things that you'd worry about is a sudden swelling of your leg which could be a deep vein thrombosis but it's very rare at this stage unless you put yourself to bed or you have an underlying problem um, and again you can get an infection but again by the third week it's very very unlikely so unless there's something really untoward you should just see more healing at this stage. After any surgery, any doctor will tell you that you should keep out of the sun. And one of the reasons for that is sunlight on a healing wound can make it go brown. Now, if you've got uh, your veins treated, the last thing you want to do is replace varicose veins with lots of little brown specks where the veins were treated. So treat yourself with some respect. And when you have a, a nice hot day, either use factor 50 or cover up. Don't let the sunlight get onto fresh wounds for the first six weeks. Once you reach week four after your surgery, things are really starting to look much better. Most of the bruising has gone, and if it hasn't gone, it's going to go soon. You might be a little worried there's still a few little lumps and bumps about, and occasionally you can get a little collection, but they will always disappear by themselves. There's nothing to worry with that. Don't worry if you can feel lumps and bumps as you run your fingers down your legs. That's all quite normal. And of course, thread veins and any other little green veins can be taken away with sclerotherapy later. So at this moment, none of that worries you. One thing you will notice on your legs is any of the little pinholes or phlebectomy wounds will still be quite pink. They might be more faded than they were before, but certainly if you've got quite white skin, these can stay pink for right up to three months or even more, and very rarely up to six months, but usually things will disappear in that time. So don't worry if it's still looking a little bit at the moment like you've had surgery. What you should do is look an awful lot better than the previous weeks, and you're well on your way to healing. At this stage, it's very rare to get a complication at all. But if you do think you've got a complication, the only things we'd really worry about as an urgent thing is if you had a deep vein thrombosis, and that would be at this stage very clear. You get a sudden change, a swelling, unable to put your foot down, very, very tender on standing, and you'd know something had changed. An infection at this stage is incredibly rare. And so really, at this stage, you're really home and dry. As far as the healing after treatment is concerned, many people want to know if there's something that they can do to help or if there's something they should avoid. Really, apart from what we've said before about sunlight being avoided, there's little you can do that won't heal naturally. You can do things that would damage it, and so you have to be very careful not to put yourself to bed, uh, where you can get a deep vein thrombus, so you get back to normal life. And certainly in the early days, do not put anything on the wounds. Don't put bio oils or anything to try and help them heal. We have had a couple of patients who have put on the potions that they've got on the internet to try and help healing that have ended up making the, state of the scars go more brown. And that's been a concern. We don't know why that happened, but your body will heal naturally. Just don't do anything to interrupt that. What is good though, vitamin C, good balanced nutrition and anything with protein in it because your body needs to make new tissue. So have a nice balanced diet and if you're going to take a supplement, anything with vitamin C or protein is going to be a positive help. And at any stage, although medically you don't need support stockings anymore, at any stage if it's more comfortable, just pop a support stocking on and go for a walk and that will take away most aches and pains. 
One of the treatments that we do is called ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy or foam sclerotherapy. And this is where we mix a sclerosant, something that kills veins, a liquid with gas, usually carbon dioxide and oxygen if you want to be safe. Some people use air, but you should really use something that's inert. And we inject this foam into the veins under ultrasound. The foam pushes blood out of the vein, and that means that all of the chemical goes into the vein wall and kills it. Now, as that vein's dying, it's going to take three weeks to die. And in that time, you mustn't let blood get back into that vein. If blood goes back into that vein in that three weeks, you'll end up with thrombus, in other words, clotted blood. And clotted blood is painful, it goes red and lumpy, and also you get a permanent brown stain. And that stain can be permanent, if it's not permanent, it's going to last a long time. So what we do when we do foam sclerotherapy is we bring you into the clinic. We put an ultrasound onto your leg to find out which veins need treatment. We inject the foam sclerotherapy and instantly bandage the leg and then put a stocking over the top of it. And that compression, once it's on, must not come off for three weeks, day and night. If it comes off, even for five minutes, even if you wanted a shower or even if you wanted to show someone or you just wanted to rest, if that blood then gets back into those dying veins, you will end up with the brown stains and phlebitis. So once we have put that compression on, you must keep it on for three weeks, day and night. And if for any reason you think it has to come off, your leg's really painful, or if there's another problem such as swollen toes, please contact the clinic at that stage because we need to see you because only we should take it off for you. So after three weeks from your foam sclerotherapy, by now you'll be desperate to get your bandages and stocking off. We advise you at the Whiteley Clinic to come in and let us do it because it's important that as we take it off, we do a little scan, make sure there's no DVT, make sure there's no blood collection, which we would then release for you, and that way you get the best possible result. Some people take it off themselves, but if you kept it on for the three weeks, you shouldn't really have much problem. Now, what does it look like? Once you've taken the bandage off and you look at your leg, you will be disappointed. You'll look at your leg and think, I just wonder why I went through all of that. It's not looking like it does on the brochures. And the reason is you're still seeing the inflammation. Remember, we're killing veins. We're not just magically removing them. We're killing them, and that involves your body removing it, and that process is called inflammation. Once you get out to about six weeks afterwards, then you're starting to see the advantage. And by nine to 12 weeks, you're really seeing good improvements. If there are still little thread veins, we'll come back and do some microsclerotherapy, and that's a very similar thing to foam sclerotherapy. You still wear the compression afterwards, but it's a much less of a big deal. The most important thing you remember is the foam sclerotherapy improvements can continue right up to 18 months after the procedure. And that's just because these veins are on the surface and so you see the healing. So don't worry if it's not looking great. You'll be coming back for a review, in any case, usually about eight weeks. We'll look at everything for you and check everything's looking good. You should look and see if there's any complications. Very, very, very rarely you can get a little chemical ulcer. And this is a little process where some of the sclerotherapy has gone into a very small artery next door to one of the veins. And you can get a little patch of skin that usually goes red and sometimes black and can even break down like little greys. Never worry about it, it always heals, just keep it nice and dry. Do not let anyone put dressings on it and get it wet. If it does, it spreads. So just let it crust over, get a nice scab on it and dry and it'll fall off. There really should be no other complications. If you did take your compression off early or if it didn't fit, you could have some brown stains developing on your legs. If that happens, you should come and see us because sometimes we can reduce those brown stains a little bit by using ultrasound, finding where the lumps are and releasing some of that trapped blood. And that can actually improve things for you. So you must contact us. Don't just sit back and wait and see if they go away. Apart from that, really, there's very, very little complications at this stage. If you did get a very big swollen leg, once again, come and see us. There's a very small chance you have a DVT for another reason, rarely because of foam sclerotherapy at this stage. But we're always interested to see you if there's a post-operative problem. It can be hard to know whether things are normal or not. And although this video does give some indication about what to expect at each stage, it might be worth looking at Jen's story. Jen came to see us and she had her veins treated. She had all the techniques that you're seeing here and she put up a fantastic Instagram story that's taken all the way through the healing process. And so you see it warts and all until she ends up with the lovely result we expect. 
The veins world is changing a lot at the moment and there's even more new techniques for both diagnosis and treatment and some of them are becoming very exciting. If you do want to keep up to date, please subscribe to the Whiteley Clinic YouTube channel and you'll see the latest things coming out as we produce more videos about the latest techniques that we use. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you found it useful. If you are going through the recovery process yourself, I hope you have a good recovery and I hope you haven't had any of the complications I've had to describe.